Hi and welcome to uh, Game Creation and in today's video we're just going to learn about random numbers. Uh, it might not be the longest video um, that I've ever made um, but I think it's a really important one because you could, you'll could, you probably need a set of like um, some random elements in any game you make. Um, if games are predictable they're not that interesting. I mean even the most predictable games like the original Super Mario Brothers um, which is just a standard level all the enemies are in the same place. It's very, very standard. But there are also some elements of randomness, even about that game, which you wouldn't have thought that there there would be. But there definitely are some elements of randomness. And as you've gone from there all the way to the very latest games, like there's randomness all the time in computer games because it makes it fun and it makes the replayability more interesting because you don't want to play the same game again. You want there to be a slight uh, change on it. But random is something that computers f find impossible. Um, no computer can create a random number. Um, and the idea of a computer is to make it seem like it's random, um, even though in many, or in, in every case on computers, it's never random. So you might think, well, how does a computer make a random number? And that's the million dollar question. And the reason it's so important for computers to be convincing about its random number is um, because if you've ever used your computer for um, logging into a website or for, um, I don't know, doing banking online, um, it's really, really important that the computer has the ability to create a random number to be able to create what is called a random key to be able to assign to the packet it sends to the servers of the bank uh, to authenticate you are who you say you are. I'm not going to go into um, encryption and crypt cryptography or anything like that, but it is really, really important. And so a lot of people through the, the decades, uh, even even the whole of last century, were trying to come up with a way of getting a computer to create the most convincing random number it can. Um, and in the early days, what, what they used to program in is just uh, like a random list that the computer will go from here to here and then start from there and then go to the next one and just have a list of random numbers. Um, and you can still buy, um, if if, you put, if I put my maths hat on, uh, you can still buy books of random numbers. Um, and those are pretty much random, as in they've had, they've, there's been a process, a uh, physical process normally, um, that has generated the random numbers. There was a, a video I watched the other day of a company in America that uses lava lamps and loads and loads of lava lamps to generate random numbers for its cryptography. Um, but the most common method, uh, two, most common two methods, uh, first of all, um, they use the time. Um, so computers and applications and games now will use the time um, that your computer is on, so the current time on the computer. And the reason for that is um, there's, with maths and stuff, as long as you have a seed number that's different to the last time you played the game, you'll have a completely different experience. And it's getting that seed number different. Um, so the only thing that's reliably different between today when you switch your computer on and tomorrow when you switch your computer on is the time. So they use that time and then they can make it like you'd think, oh, it's only a day later, so therefore it won't be that random. No, there's mathematical processes involving weird curves and graphs and stuff that that number and tomorrow's number will be radically different um, and they won't even if it's a, a nanosecond or a microsecond whatever they, they count in even if it's just a tiny bit of time it will be a completely different uh, random number that's generated um, so that's that's one of the most common ones you might think well hang on but on a snares or a nares or a mega drive they don't have a clock in them. Or in fact, you know, most games don't have a clock. I think later on, they uh, stuff like I don't know, Animal Crossing or something probably had a clock in it, um, and Pokemon uh, eventually. Um, but how does it do it when there's no clock in it? Because the t it won't know that the time has passed. Um, and they used to do it with inputs, so uh, the distance between pressing A in the menu and stuff, and the you would do it slightly different. No, like no one would press A at exactly the same time every single time. No one would do that level in exactly the same way. Uh, so you can create random numbers from the 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 interactions. Anyway, 
I'm waffling um, because I find it absolutely fascinating because when, I don't know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, um, I, I was watching, reading something, uh, I think I was watching it or reading it, uh, and it was like, oh yeah, do you know, like, it's really difficult for computers to be random, or, like, it's impossible for computers to be random, I'm like, oh yeah, no, I suppose it would be, and I tried to think in my head about all the different ways, oh, for goodness sake, they could just do this, and it's never truly random, the only way I suppose they could they could be better is if there was a physical process in there, like a physical dice being rolled or something. Um, but anyway, waffle over. Let's see how clicked in do it. Uh, so I've opened up the same project as we used. I don't know, was it four four weeks ago? Um, and um, I think there was. I think when I run this, there's an annoying quirk. Yeah. So this here, um, the layer this is on is hidden. Yet yeah, this is still like there, so we want to get rid of that. And the way we'll do that, I think, is we'll just go into the um, already there, go into the layer, um, and hide it on start. All I'll do is I'll go into the dev area and do a start of frame event. I'll probably put it at the top, and I'll just unhide that, and it's under visibility, and make it reappear. And then all I need to do now is just make that not active because we're not doing any of the development stuff. There we are, that sorts that out. I'm also going to hide the dialog box, um, which I don't know whether I can just hide, like make it not active. Let's see if I. Oh, it's still there. So what I need to do is do a start of frame. And then just uh, do make it make it reappear. I think it's that thing there. I think it's the strings as well. I uh, can't click and drag that. The visibility make it reappear. I think string two's all right. Let's just go back in here and the dialog box. That's the dev layer, this is the dialog box layer, so I'll just make those invisible. So they're created, but they're just not visible. And let's just run that. There we go. And let's just check to see if I activate this. See if they're there. They should be. Yeah, they are. Excellent. Okay. I will need to sort that out later on. Um, make that a bit more elegant, but... I'm not. I'm not going to extend the dialog box um, or the dev area. We're not going to be using those this week. Um, but something we will be using is um, random encounters or random battles. So we might as well um, create a group of events and random battles. Why battles, not encounters? Because I cannot guarantee our spell encounters correctly. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do a start a frame event, and this is just us playing around here. Um, and we're going to pick, um, all we're going to do is just pick a, a global variable, um, which is B, and we're just going to feed some functions in here. So it just says random there, and it says enter a base number. So I'm going to enter 10 as the base number, and we'll see what happens. So all that's going to happen is global value B, which we'll need to dig into the global value B, will be set to a random number, and we have this base number as 10. Okay, so let's just close all that. And it says 8. Brilliant. Let's refresh. 3, 8, 6, 2, 1, 8, 1, 6, 9, 8, 5. And let's just see. So have a think, have a look and see what number hasn't turned up. So I've clicked it enough times now, and I've refreshed it enough times. But you'll notice that the base number, the one I typed in, which was 10, hasn't come up. Have a think about why. <laughs> uh, the reason is, is that another number comes up instead of it, which is 0. So by 10, 10 is the amount of numbers that will be randomly generated. It's 0 based. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? And there's 10 numbers between 0 and 9. 10 would be the 11th number. 
sintered zero base. Okay, so first note is that the base number, uh, which I'll show here, the base number here is the uh, amount of numbers that you're randomly generating, and um, zero is included, it's zero based. Okay, so if you don't want it zero based, what you can do is you can use random range, which will say the minimum, which is one, and the maximum, which is 10. So let's see what that does. I think it should be pretty obvious, but let's pretend it's not obvious. Right, so therefore 10 now comes up, one now comes up, and then all the numbers in between. But notice now zero doesn't come up. Which of these is a safer function to use? Probably this one, since you're not going to forget that it's zero based. Um, or this one. So if I did this, it would be exactly the same thing. So let's just have a look. Refresh it and see what that value be. So it's, there's a 1, there's a 9, and no doubt there's a 10 there but no zero. And that's just because we're adding one onto them. Because it's zero based, to make it number based, like you know normal numbers, uh, you just add one to it. Now, into the territory that I don't actually know, what happens if I put 0 0.7 in there? I don't genuinely don't know. So let's have a go. Ah, there we are. So 0 0.7, or whatever I put in, I think it was 0 0.7. 0 0.7 is counted as basically 1, I think. They probably round it. There we are. <laughs> okay. Um, some programs you work with, actually, uh, and, and your calculator, uh, do this. Uh, it should be divided by a thousand. I think this is what most calculators do. So let's just have a look. Yeah. So if I switch back to me a second, I can show you on the calculator. And this is um, me wondering whether I can use this button or find it. There we are, random. So shift and random. And it does have a base number as well. That's very cool. All right, random. And if you have a look, and the light is rubbish over there, but it's uh, 0.858. So calculators will give you, or the calculators I use, the Casio ones, will give you three um, decimal places. So if you just times it by a thousand, um, you will then get um, uh, a random three digit number. So you can just pick the first digit or whatever um, if you, one two. <laughs> um, so every kind of uh, programming language does random slightly different um, and as we've seen um, there's nothing special about this last one here um, because you can achieve the same thing so um, imagine I wanted the numbers between 10 and 20 I could just add 10 to the end of this um, and instead of using the random range this is kind of like a helper function this probably uses this random function and then just adds the minimum onto it um, that's all that does i'm sure um, so yeah i hope uh, this video has been useful um, and uh, if you think of other ways that you can create random numbers i think there are some extensions that do uh, random numbers um, so be definitely i think there i think you can get random numbers in here but i think it's just the same thing no doubt you can. This is when I'm like, I've never used this for that. It's probably calculations, I would have thought. Logical, no. Uh, conversions? Nope, oh, it's not in there. But I'm sure there's some extensions that you can download that give you a different type of random number, whatever the heck that means. Um, but we shall be using this on our game in tomorrow's video so i look forward to seeing you then thank you very much for watching this video if you want to see more from us please click subscribe we release videos every single weekday at 7 p.m uk time thank you